Okay. Guy coming to this stage is performed on BET. He's one of the few white guys that perform on BET. He's done XM Satellite Radio. He's done three U.S. old tours to entertain the troops overseas. Please put your hands together from St. Louis, the Friday. My first time ever on stage was uh, 1980. I was in the Marine Corps, and I, uh, me and five Marines, we were, I was stationed in 29 Palms, California, and we were in Palm Springs for the weekend, and we stopped at the Laugh Stop in Palm Springs. Very cool, brand new comedy club. Now this is 1980, comedy clubs weren't even open. And uh, this one had just been open brand new, and we went in there, got a table, and I don't know who the comedian was, but I was the biggest jerk. I started heckling this guy from minute one, heckled him, and normally, nowadays, they'd throw you out of the comedy club, but they didn't know how to deal with me, and it became just me and the comic back and forth. Finally, he said, why don't you come up here on stage? You think you're so funny, come up here on stage. And the guys I'm with are going, go, go, you gotta go. And I'm going, no, I don't think so. They, finally, they pushed me on stage. The guy came out, he introduced me, made the number one mistake in comedy, he gave me the mic. Microphone. Then he went and sat at my table and heckled me all the way through eight minutes of the worst sloppy comedy ever. But that was the first time I'd ever stepped on stage, 1980. And I didn't get on stage again until 1992 when my brother Oscar, who threw me off a high dive when I was six years old, actually threw me on stage and said, get up there, man. You can do that. That's what you need to do. Get up there and tell jokes. 2006 was a shitty year for me. I lost a finger in 2006. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Look, I'm so anti-marriage, I got rid of the ring finger. What do you think of that? <laughs> Woke up with a Bart Simpson hand. That's bullshit right there. <laughs> I got shot in the hand with a 357 during a carjacking. And you know what? Nobody would have got hurt if the lady would have gave up the minivan. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm kidding, I did, I did get shot with a 357, but there was no carjacking, it was my own gun, and that story's not as cool as the carjacking one. <laughs> I got shot with my own gun, and the police took my gun, and the judge said the only gun I'm allowed to own now is a squirt gun or a glue gun. <laughs> so don't break into my house, I will soak your ass and stick you to the wall. <laughs> That's how I roll, lady, I'm a gangsta. I have done a lot of shows for the military. I've uh, been overseas three times, done about 30 bases in Germany. Also have done a ton of bases here in the United States. Uh, done Andrews Air Force Base where they keep Air Force One. Also have done Whiteman Air Force Base out there where they keep the stealth bombers. You know, I, I look at it like this, uh, whether you like the war or not, you gotta support the men and women overseas fighting for us. So I like to do military shows. And the military, they appreciate comedy pretty much more than anybody. They really appreciate you coming out and doing a show for them. I, uh, I actually did a show in Ramstein, Germany at the Rhine Main Rocket Lounge the night before the Iraqi war started for the 101st Airborne uh, Battalion. They were there and after the show they're going, we're going into Iraq in the morning. No one knew it. It was pretty crazy. So I, I, I like entertaining the military. They're real appreciative about it. So I've been overseas three times to entertain our troops. God bless our troops. How about it? That's right. God love the troops. And I do this at every show, man. Some of you may know I'm from Iceland, man, and we're gonna do a toast to the troops here in about a couple seconds, but I do this at every show that I do. I do a toast to the troops. I'm from Iceland, and in Iceland, when we do a, a toast, we don't say uh, cheers, we say skull, S-K-O-L. So we're gonna do an Icelandic toast to the troops, okay? We're gonna get them up in the air right now. Let's get them up in the air. Hold on, damn it. This is to all the men and women overseas. God love them, God bless them. Hope they all come back alive, right? Skull! I do shows for the firemen every year, and I do shows for the police. Uh, don't kid yourself, the police love to party, and they love the cop jokes, man. Cops love cop jokes. They love to be ripped on. I actually did a show at Fort Leavenworth Army Base for uh, the General Staff College there, and they gave me a really nice award for doing uh, all the shows I've done for the military in the last 10 years. And on the way home, I got pulled over, 
This is a true story. The cop got me out. He smelled a little alcohol in my breath, made me do the sobriety test on the side of I-70 at one o'clock in the morning. And while I'm doing the test, the other cop is looking in the window with the flashlight and he goes, hey, what's this award here in your car that you got from the general at the general staff college that's dated today? And I go, well, that's an award I got for doing a comedy show there tonight. And they go, you're a comedian? I go, yeah. And they both hit me with their flashlight and said, tell us a joke. And I literally told jokes to two cops by cop light on the side of the highway for two police officers. So don't kid yourself, the cops love the jokes. And some of them are cool. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them. Got pulled over a couple weeks ago. Cop came up to the car, stuck his head in the window. He's going, you got anything in the car you shouldn't have? I go, no, sir. He goes, there's nothing in the car that's illegal? I said, yes, sir. He goes, because I have a dog in my car that's going to tell me if you got anything illegal in the car. I said, no shit, you got a talking dog? <laughs> you want to get even with the police? Do what I do. Get yourself a CB with a PA system. Wait till you get pulled over. Right when the cop gets out of the car, go, please remain in your vehicle. You will scare the hell out of them and piss them off at the same time. If you do it at just the right time, they'll shoot themselves in the foot. Piss this cop all bad once he come hopping up to the car. He goes, I pulled you over because your lights are off. I go, dude, I pull over because yours were on. <laughs> Can't you see I'm in a nighttime funeral here? He goes, get out of the car, I'm going to have to search you. He goes, you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? I go, yeah, I got this rash on my balls. <laughs> I got it from a rope, it's a long story. And I love that question they ask you now before they search you, before they stick their hand in your pants, they'll go, you have anything in there that's gonna poke me? <laughs> well, you'd have to be butt naked, I'd have to be really liquored up. <laughs> don't drink and drive if you don't have to, but sometimes you have to, right? Seriously, if you're drinking and driving and you get pulled over, this is what you can do. Cop comes up to the driver's door, he goes, get out of the car. Hopefully, that's where you're sitting. <laughs> he goes, get out of the car. You know you're drunk, jump over the console, jump out the passenger door, run around to the back, pop the trunk, hop in there, pull it closed real quick. <laughs> Just stay in the trunk. He'll be like, get out of the trunk, screw you, go away. <laughs> How long do you think you can stay in there? Shit, there's a 24 pack iced up in here and I got some beef jerky, I can stay in here a week. Thanks a lot, y'all. I'm the front man. You guys are great. I got a